Hi guys, welcome back to another Unity Touch tutorial. My name is Devin, and today we're going to be exploring the new Unity 4.6 GUI and how we can make it interact with touch input. In my previous videos, we created a script called Touch Logic, which handled all of the touch inputs for us, but that um, that script relied on the old Unity GUI uh, system, GUI textures, um, which are still available in the 4.6 uh, Unity but if you're creating a game from scratch and you haven't made your UI yet, I would highly suggest not using GUI textures, not using the touch logic, and just using the 4.6 UI, because it is way cooler and it handles touch input on its own, so you don't even need a custom touch logic script. That being said, I am planning on redoing all of my old videos that were reliant on the touch logic uh, script, so the touch joystick, uh, first person controller, um, the platformer, I'm going to be redoing all of those using the new 4.6 uh, UI. Um, but if for whatever reason you still need to use the old GUI texture system, um, you'll notice in the new Unity 4.6 there is no more create GUI texture uh, option. There's only this new UI thing, which I'll get into in a second. But say for whatever reason you need to make a GUI texture, you can still do it. Uh, just create an empty game object add component, um, and then search for GUI texture, and you're good to go. You can still use that. But again, if you're just starting your UI, do not use GUI textures. Instead, use the new uh, Unity 4.6 UI. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so let's go ahead and create a new game object UI uh, button. So when we create a new uh, UI element in Unity 4.6, we'll get a canvas, the UI element that we added, and this event system. Um, this event system, it has a few components on it, one of which is a standalone input module, which will handle all of the uh, keyboard, mouse, joystick um, controls, and touch input module, which will handle touches. Uh, so the touch input module does exactly what our touch logic script did in, um, in the previous videos. Alright, so let's go back to this button. I'm going to just go ahead and make it bigger real quick and change this. So if we hit play, uh, we click on the button, you can see it changes color. And if we have it running on the Unity remote on our mobile device, we can also click on it here. But let's say we have two of these buttons now. Duplicate that, move it over. Uh, we could click on each of them here and then click on each of them here, but if we click on one, keep holding, and click on the other, it messes up. Um, and we saw this issue um, in previous versions of Unity when you use uh, on mouse down and on mouse up. Um, since we're on a computer, it just assumes that you're only ever going to have one mouse cursor um, and never have like a multi-mouse computer. And this does work on... Um, on Android and iOS builds um, because of this touch input module. It's just because we're on a computer, it's using this standalone module. But if we go ahead and build for Android, you will have the multi-touch capabilities. So just keep that in mind. If you're working with a Unity remote, your UI will not be multi-touch. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. Um, all right, so let's take another look at this button component. So we have this... Uh, this pretty cool thing down here called on click, which is an event that our event system is going to look for. So if we add an event to this, or add a uh, function call to this, we can drag a game object onto it, let's say the button itself, and pick a function for it to call when on click is called. So we have access to all of the game objects components. So we've got the game object itself, the rec transform component, uh, the canvas render right here, the image, and the button component. Um, so we can make something happen. Um, we can even create our own component for it to use. So I'm going to make one script called change image image color. Assign it to the button. Come on. And now, if I click on this, you'll see that change image color has appeared as something that we can call. Um, 
and right now we don't have any public functions. If you want to like call a custom function, you got to make it public. Um, but right now these are just the public um, functions and attributes available through mono behavior, since all scripts inherit from mono behavior by default. So let's open this up and let's go ahead and delete these guys. I'm not going to use them. Uh, let's make a public function public void um, red and let's make another one for blue oops and we want to change the image color right here this is what we want to access so this is an image component let's go ahead and make an image variable type um, so you'll notice that this is a little weird. Usually you're able to, like, say, you know, transform and have a transform variable type. Um, but image, for some reason, is not showing up. Let's go ahead and take that over to the uh, Unity scripting reference website, the documentation, search for image, and you'll see that image is inside of namespace unity engine.ui. Let's go ahead and copy that, go back to our script, and up here, where you see these using statements, let's go ahead and make another one, oops, using unityengine.ui, and now, um, let's see, now it, sh yeah, now it shows up, um, so we can have an image variable type, I'm going to call it image, there we go, uh, let's go ahead and say void start, image equals get component there we go get component of type image so when this starts it'll find the image component on this game object and store it in this variable and we're going to go ahead and say uh, in our two functions image dot color because whoop, we have the image component and we want to find its uh, color attribute and change it. So image.color is going to equal color dot red. That's what this function will do. And down here we'll make this one turn it to blue. Alright, so cool. These are public functions now. And if we go back here, um, we could go to change color attribute, or uh, change image color function and pick red or blue. I pick blue, and now if I play, if I click, it's going to turn green because of this uh, pressed, but the on-click event is actually when we press down and lift up on the button. So if I lift up now, it turns blue. Cool. Um, and this will work over here, of course. So that's cool. But let's say we want it to do other things, like say we want to... Uh, do something when we drag on the button or when we um, move the button or, or something. Um, so this button component is pretty cool, um, but it only gives us access to this one on-click event. Let's say we want to do something else. So I'm going to remove that component and add our own event trigger component. Now this event trigger component lets you add a new event type and, you know, we've got all these different things. Uh, pointer, enter, exit, down, up, click, drag, move, all this stuff. Um, I'm just going to make one for on pointer down and another one for on pointer up. So it's going to do two separate things when we press down and when we press up. So I'm going to add these guys, drag the button onto both of those, and have it change color to blue when we press down and change color to red when we press up. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this guy and move him over here. So now, if I hit play, these guys change colors. If I do it over here, oops, and we do it over here, we can tap blue, red, blue, red. That works. Cool. Alright, so now that that works, that's pretty much all I was going to show you. But let's go ahead and build this baby so we can actually see the multi-touch in action. 
Alright, so now that it's built on my Android, uh, well, first thing you'll notice is the buttons are really tiny compared to what they were in the editor. Um, I've got a, a, another tutorial that I'll link to uh, that shows you how to make sure that they seal to the same size for every resolution so they look the same as they do in editor for every device. Um, I did videos for it for the GUI text and GUI texture, and I'm going to, or now I've done it for uh, the 4.6 GUI. So anyway, uh, back to the matter at hand. I can tap on one, it'll turn blue. Tap on the other, it'll also turn blue. And if I let go, they'll turn red. So multi-touch works. Um, yeah, so just keep that in mind. Multi-touch will work on the actual build. It might not work on the uh, Unity remote uh, playing in the editor. So that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if this was helpful. Uh, tell all your friends. Uh, and if you would like to receive updates whenever I publish a new video, be sure to subscribe. Uh, follow me on Twitter, uh, Facebook, my website, devination.com. And um, yeah, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.